Film fans of YouTube, hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh, the Movie Apprentice, and today I am finally getting a chance to look at Godzilla Minus One, which finally releases in UK cinemas tomorrow. Now, I am late reviewing this because release schedules, man, they are a pain in the butt. This is directed by Takashi Yamazaki and stars Rinosuke Kamiki, Minami Hamabe, Koronosuke Sasaki and Hidetaka Yoshioka. This follows a kamikaze pilot who, at the end of World War II, decides he does not want to die in this way and is branded a coward when he goes back home. But after an old nightmare returns in the form of Godzilla, he and several of his comrades have to band together to take on this threat and address Japan's dark past. Before I get into my review, we do like what you're seeing on the channel. Consider clicking that like button and subscribe for more reviews coming like this all the time. We are hoping to get to 500 by the end of the year. We are only 28 away. So do look forward to helping me out with that one. It would really mean a lot. Without further ado, let's talk about Godzilla Minus One. Godzilla Minus One, almost like Into the Spider-Verse a few years ago, came out in December and has almost ended up being this sleeper hit that is getting a lot of praise through word of mouth. It felt like we got a trailer one day and we got the reviews the very next day. It was very rapid in how quick this movie came out. And a lot of people joke that, hey, we're getting a sequel to Oppenheimer. Because, yes, we all know that Godzilla is a literal metaphor for the nuclear bomb. I will say straight up, when Oppenheimer came out, a lot of people had this negative where they said they wish that they showed the actual bombing of Hiroshima. If you really, really, really wanted to see a Japanese city get devastated by a nuclear blast. Congratulations, you do get it in this movie, but I will say be careful what you wish for because it is a very harrowing sequence. This film got a lot of hype going into it. So I went in expecting a good movie, but usually when the film is very overwhelmingly hyped up, I always end up being let down by it in some ways. And whilst I can say that this film does have its problems, for example, the CG at times is rather cheap looking. It's a Japanese production. They do not have the same budget that Hollywood movies throw away on a consistent basis. So I don't go into Japanese movies expecting the greatest CGI ever made. And once you go in with expectation, it doesn't bother you as much. It's also a bit heavy handed with its messaging. You could play a drinking game with how many times a character will make a war is bad reference because this film is straight to the point in the fact that it is a metaphor for Japan fresh from its defeat in World War II. Looking back at its militaristic government and their militaristic past and how casually they would dispose of lives and face that fact and move forward as a nation into the cultural juggernaut that Japan is today. There is no question that Japan in this day and age, is quite a popular country. Everyone is aware of Japan. A lot of their media, especially their film and anime, have directly influenced a lot of products that you see in the Western world today. And this film acts as that transition between the militaristic wanting to conquer government to the more culturally focused government that we have today. It is heavily emphasized that a kamikaze pilot that got home alive after a losing effort did not do his duty and is absolutely disgraced. There was a great arc with our lead character, who is the kamikaze pilot, and a neighbor of his that immediately is angry at him for not dying honorably. And the transition from that to this same character being very frustrated that he dared to even think about doing something crazy. It is a great narrative for a line. There is a lot in this movie that you could argue are negative. CGI, as I've already stated, the heavy handedness on its political messaging when it comes to being a very anti-war movie. And of course, there are points where I could see exactly where the plot was going with certain seeds that were planted. If there was one shot or one bit of information being passed on screen, I immediately clicked on that this is going to lead to this happening. This is going to lead to a reveal of that happening. Usually that would be a detriment for films. The important thing is, is how is the story told? And Godzilla Minus One tells this story in a beautiful way. I will be completely honest, for the first 40 minutes or so, 
I was enjoying myself. I thought it was an okay movie. It was good, but it wasn't amazing. There is an exact moment where like the flick of a light switch or the snap of a fingers, the film goes from being, this is okay, to a ride that has me holding my breath with adrenaline pumping. And I came out of the cinema and I am not even over exaggerating why I said I've come out and waiting for my bit of public transport to get me home. And I look down and my left hand is trembling. Like this film was an emotional ride and I was tearing up for the last 30 or 40 minutes or so. Just the way this story is told, the obvious connections and symbology within this. If you go into this one in to see Godzilla do a lot of Godzilla things and destroy a bunch of cities, you do get that. But I will say in this movie that is about two hours long, maybe just over. Godzilla's maybe on screen for about 20 minutes. Like this film primarily focuses on the human characters and the human stories and the cast and just do a fantastic job because this film shows that you can have a Godzilla movie that focuses on human characters and it working tremendously. Every human character in this is so engaging. The actors in this are absolutely brilliant and every character and their motivations, this whole idea of a country rebuilding itself after a terrible war, the older lot being ashamed of their time in the war and having to go through it. There is literally a line where this younger generation kid is bitter because he's being left behind and is having a go at them saying, oh, just because he didn't fight in the war. And they literally say not being in the war is something to be proud of. Like it's very heavy handed in that anti-war sentiment, but it just works really well. Munateka Aoki plays a character in this that has a strained relationship with our lead protagonist but in the small amount of time that he is on screen, he delivers a very nuanced performance. Minami Hamabe is quite literally the heart of this movie that keeps our main protagonist on the straight and now, and I love her character's motivations within this. The Ryanosuke Kamiki's performance, he is absolutely brilliant in the lead role. He is a character that is dealing with the shame of being a kamikaze pilot that chose to not die honorably, dealing with that grief, dealing with that guilt of being a survivor, dealing with facing the ghost of his past. There are a lot of people that have come back from wars and said that for them, the war will always haunt them. And this character is a literal definition of that. He is stupendous in this role. And Kurinosuke Sasaki is absolutely fantastic as almost like a best buddy character. Like I say, this film is heavy-handed in its messaging. It does have narrative beats that are obvious. You can literally draw a map of where the film's going to go for the last 40 minutes, but it does not matter because the way the story is told is beautifully done. It is a way of Japan as a nation coming together, acknowledging that their government did not care about them during the war. There was a casualness with life. Like they even mentioned things like planes not having ejector seats, for example. Like if you were getting shot down, you were to crash that plane and die yourself, not escape and fight another day by living. There is just so much to love in this and Godzilla in this, because I've not really talked about Godzilla much in this Godzilla review. He is terrifying. This is probably the most terrifying Godzilla we have seen. We are getting so used to the westernized Monsterverse movies where. We are seeing the destruction of cities, but it's just wanting to see these big monsters fighting each other and destroying a city. And we don't think about what it's like at ground zero from the angle of the humans involved. With this movie, we get to see the humans at the ground zero. We get to see their terror. We get to see how they try and survive these situations where their town is literally being torn apart. People always are on film Twitter like, well, actually, Godzilla is a politically charged movie at base because he is actually a walking metaphor for the atomic bomb. <laughs> that attitude is said a lot of times, especially when you have those saying that Godzilla shouldn't be woke. It's never been political because there's been a bit of that recently. This film hammers it home that Godzilla is literally a nuclear bomb and you never have really appreciated it until you see this movie because that scene is going to stick with me for quite some time. This film just 
absolutely blew me away. It doesn't matter that the CG wasn't great. It doesn't matter that there were some political elements. It doesn't matter that it was heavy handed in its political messaging. What mattered for me was, is the story good? Is it told well? Does it make me feel something? And it ticked all them boxes. This is like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 for me, something that just hit me deeply. And this film is worth the hype. So please check this out if you have not so far. Before I grade this, if you do like what you're seeing on the channel, consider dropping that like button and subscribe for more video reviews like that's coming all the time. But without further ado, let's grade this. Godzilla Minus One, it is a movie that has been getting a lot of praise and it deserves every single moment of it. From fantastic performances to showing us exactly how to make a Godzilla movie with some human characters that you can really empathize and relate to. From some epic destruction sequences, a great theme of moving on as a nation into a new era, the shame of war, and just well and truly hammering home the symbology of Godzilla being the nuclear bomb. It's very well done. Definitely worth the hype. Obviously in America, you've probably seen it by now, but those of you based across the sea like me, give this a watch if you can. I'm going to have a say that for me, Godzilla Minus One is a perfect cup of tea. So Godzilla Minus One, have you seen it? If you have, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. If you like what you see in the channel, like, subscribe, follow me on socials, all that good stuff. Don't know how many more reviews I'm getting for this year, but stay tuned for my ranking list. I'm going to tier list everything I've seen this year, as well as doing my usual cinema celebration. But until next time, everybody, my name is Josh. I've been your movie apprentice, and I'll see you all in the next video.